Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Dota 2 shitcast. There's something special going on with this game. Something, something truly extraordinary. Something I didn't believe was possible. There are three players in this game with a combined MMR of less than 200. <laughs> now, I, I don't really know how that is possible. It is now making me... Uh, Think, uh, can you go into the negatives? Is this possible? Like, can you actually have negative MMR? Because again, some players in this game are really trying hard to get there. Um, but nonetheless, we're gonna go ahead and take a look. This replay was submitted by uh, this guy, by Abba, uh, who plays Pathfinder with us. In case you watch Pathfinder, then you're familiar with Abba. If you don't, then that's alright too, but I just felt like pointing it out. Other than that, this game is looking uh, kind of funny. It's a little bit of a longer one, but all of these replays are. Like, seriously, I have looked at so many, like, 1K MMR replays, and I remember, look, when, when 7.0 first got added into the game, everybody was going nuts over the, you know, level 25 talents. It's just like, oh my god, I get to level 25 every single game. And I was just listening to that, and I'm like, no, I don't. Right? Like, like I almost never get to level 25. The games end far too early. I now finally understand. Well, I kind of knew back then too what was going on, but now I fully understand. Because um, people are playing in 1K MMR, and holy shit, these games do not end ever. Right? Like, that shit just keeps going for a while. Because it's just, I don't know. Anyway, Slark is going in on the bristle back right here. Oh, the big initiation! Oh, can he do it? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I like how the Necrophos was also just sitting to the sidelines. It's just like, oh, I got hostile ball, right? I mean, I don't really what you expect. I don't really know what you expect me to do, right? Like, I'm just here to apply my aura to people. And that's what I'm gonna do here, and I don't really care about anything else. We have an invoker in this game, which I'm very excited to see. Right, that is just fantastic. I love watching invokers fail. It's gotta be one of my, my favorite things in the world. Watching Invokers fail, it's like, oh my god. It is truly just beautiful. Enigma jungling. I'm a little surprised to not see a jungler on the Radiant side. You almost always see a jungler on um, both sides in these games, but alright. I, I suppose so. I suppose so. Why do you use that? It doesn't even dispel the Quill Spray. Like, you cannot dispel Quill Spray. It is not dispellable. It says it right there. It cannot be dispelled. Come on. <laughs> Alright. Early boots on this guy. So, not getting any region. We had a similar situation with the Winter Viber and also just getting boots. I mean, who really needs region? Right? Like, it's it's not that important. Mid lane, uh, she got some regular stuff in Woka. Also, a little bit weird, but not crazy. Right? Definitely something that is. Reasonable. Now, let me go ahead and use this uh, coma early stage to yet again talk about the need for replays. You guys want to see more shit casts? If so, first of all, let me know as always. But secondly, secondly, leave your replays. And this is really important because I don't have any better way of getting these, right? I need you to give me the replays. And uh, not only that, but ideally leave descriptions of the replays and then go through the comment sections of this video. Yeah, go through the comment section and upload all of the shit that you want to see. Right? I don't expect you to actually go into the client and look at the replay and see if the description is actually accurate. No, 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 no. But we'll just assume the description is accurate and then just upload whatever description sounds the most appealing to you. Alright guys, this is really us working together, because I can't do this on my own. Because I just, I don't have the replays, right? <laughs> the TA, oh, she's trying to run, I mean, she will be fine. You need to activate that refraction. No, don't leave the shrine, the shrine is still going on, man! What are you doing? You're not gonna kill him! You don't have boots, you don't have ultimate. Is this going to work? No way. No way. Come on. What, what, what is this Invoker yeah. doing right now? There's no way. Okay, alright. Meantime, we do have a kill at the bottom. Actually, two kills while that's going on. Let's go ahead and skip back really quick. Just making sure that we catch all of this. So, this Bristleback is still sitting on no HP. Necro, he wants to fight. And by fight, I mean really not want to fight. Is he just dead? Is he just gonna die to the main? One more attack. 
Yup, and down he goes and the maiden dies to the tower. Well, I... <laughs> come on. No, Slark, you had him! He was right there! Why do you not have pounds yet? Oh, man. Okay, well, this, this guy is, um... Pretty low on HP, but he's got his ring of health. That's the old school stuff, you know? You random a hero and you immediately get the ring of health. Right? You don't 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 get anything else, just rush ring of health. Making sure you have that region. It's like a permanent tango. It's better than a permanent tango. Oh my god, it is so good. It's not actually better than a permanent tango. But tangos do give more region, but still. Now that was always the logic back in the day. It seems that logic is still alive and strong. No, guys, buy some regeneration. Regeneration is how you win the game. I've got Enigma in the jungle. I g uh, why? Okay, you definitely want demonic conversion, but why would you not get Malefice? I mean, I get the casual point into the Midnight Pulse, right? Like you put a casual point into it, so you just have that av ability available to you, but... Why would you not want to ma uh, go for Malefice instead? Why, why max it? I don't understand that, that's just a little bit weird. Right, like it doesn't scale well. Mana cost increases, it's just like everything about it is kind of bad. It's really one of those abilities where you max it after the other stuff. Right, I think almost always. We've got the TA in the mid lane. What is this skill build? <laughs> okay guys, please keep in mind if you're playing TA, Refraction is your best ability. Alright, it, it, it just is. The invisibility, if you really need it early on, get a casual point into it, but leave it at that. Right, you need to have side blades for farming and for early lane control. You need the refraction to be aggressive. And TA, well, she is aggressive. That's like the entire point of the hero, to be aggressive. Up at the top lane, we've got Monkey King skipping in the tree dance entirely. Hasn't watched a lot of competitive Dota, I see. Slark, dying. Guy, how is this happening? Okay, you, you have your Q, right? Oh, it's sadly not ready. Not enough mana. I think Bristleback is gonna end up being fine. You don't have boots yet. Why does he not have... <laughs> I just realized this guy doesn't have any items. Why do you not have any items? You have 1400 gold. What could you possibly be saving for? There's like... Is it just rushing Hand of Midas? So this is like the truest of the true Hand of Midas rushes. Just skipping the entire early game. Like this isn't even fast, it's not even a fast Hand of Midas timing. Like, like by now you can definitely have a much faster... Oh, by the way, can we talk about last hits really quick? We've got 20 on Invoker at 60, uh, 6 minutes. It's not great, but it can it can even happen in pro games, right? If you lose your lane, uh, but he isn't losing the lane. The TA got ten. Crystal Main is actually the second highest at fifteen, which I find somewhat disturbing. I'm not sure how the Crystal Main ended up having the second. I don't. Enigma, of course, is leading, but Enigma is just jungling, right? Like this is to be expected. It's not really particularly impressive or difficult here, but. Uh, that is very interesting. Networth, of course, led by the Enigma as well, just because he has the most farm, but... <laughs> it's an interesting little situation. Crystal Maiden, going straight Shadowblade. Right, he just wants to cast to ultimate and fuck people up with it. I'm always... This is something I've noticed in these low MMR games as well. The supports just keep wrecking people. Oh my god! Like <laughs> what?! <laughs> What is this item build? <gasps> Maxi got Heartstopper Aura as well. What is going on? Why? Why? That's all I have to ask. I just want to know why. That is... Mind boggling. I feel like I'm having a stroke right now. Because this must be... This, this can't possibly be true, right? Is that the strategy? Is that the next level play? He activates the Shadow Amulet, stays in lane, and applies Heartstopper Aura to everybody. He's maxing it out as well. 
He's almost dying. He's actually taken more damage than he dealt. Is that his strategy? Is that the next level play? He's just invisible, like... <laughs> a flying out stuff aura! That is amazing. I don't know why this isn't being done in competitive Dota, frankly. Please tell me he's just gonna die. Oh my god, one more. Oh shit! Oh he- What?! No, this- This didn't work out! This is- No! No! <laughs> This didn't just work out for them. You you can't be serious, man. You know what's even more upsetting than that strategy? The fact that it worked. Alright, that is even more upsetting. Okay, well, uh, the freeze keeping the Bloodseeker alive here. Bloodseeker will be fine. Winter Wyvern diving in a little bit deep. Now running into the Monkey King here. Monkey King does have his Q ready. Needs to use it. Nice. Okay, well, they get both kills. That was just the Radiant overstepping their boundaries pretty hard. Like, they went in far too deep there. They're quite sure why. I mean, that just didn't... That just doesn't work, right? It's just a mistake. Oh, well. TA now going for more Refraction and Psyblades. That's a very odd skill build. Right, so, like, again, STA, max out the Refraction. Max out Refraction is just too good. Hasted Invoker. Runs into the Enigma. It does deal a little bit of damage, but... I don't know if he can actually do anything. Enigma also rushing the Blink Dagger. I never liked that. Oh my god. What are you doing? Well, if only somebody had a stun. Right? Like, if only there was some way you could have a... Stun. Nice ultimate, man. Nice ultimate. If only there was some way that Monkey King could move really agile. And uh, could be really agile and move through the trees. You know, maybe even have a slow or swords. Wouldn't that be convenient if that was at all possible? Wouldn't that be just the most convenient thing? Sounds right. Is that enough? Nice. That was well done by the Winter Byron. Hey, you gotta give credit where credit is due. That, that Winter Byron not only saved that Mocha, but he also got a kill out of that situation. Slark. Slark's item, as uh, not item, skill build is actually pretty reasonable. Like, just going for the Q here. But yeah. In the meantime, the Necrophos, man, I love this guy. This guy is my favorite. He's just sitting at the tower now. He's not even doing a strategy. I don't even know. <laughs> Has this ever worked before? Ever? Oh? Black hole? There's, there's nobody around, of course. No way to follow up on it. They get one kill, two. Three. Can 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 come on? No, where are you? What? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Wait. So here's the monkey. Wait, no. Okay. So Bristlebag is just chilling here. Monkey King comes in. One, two, three, and this is where it gets beautiful. What? <laughs> God. The reaction times of a snail riding on an elephant. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. Well, I guess uh, they got the kill after all. Necrophos coming in again. The Necrophos is my personal MVP. Right, he's my hero. This guy is my hero. I don't know if he's your hero, but he's mine. I love this guy. Please just go invisible, like, here, and just... No, wait, not here. Here. Right? And and just activate your shadow amulet and chill there. Oh, dear, that works too. I mean, you won't really hit anybody, but... Oh, my God, look at how much damage you're dealing to him. Look at that bristleback. He's basically dead already. Necro? Nah, you don't have any abilities that do anything. Nah, nah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You can't just completely abandon your monkey king. Right? Like, that's fair. That's okay, that's okay. This guy's my hero. Man, I wanna give as little fucks as this Necrophos. One day, I'll achieve that. He's also- look at that! It's even more next level, he's farming the creeps in the meantime. Right? Like, he's not only- Not only- <laughs> Doing everything possible to this lane. 
He's also farming the creeps. I really don't don't know why this isn't being played at the key of major. Are you gonna die? Seven HP. Is Bloodseeker coming. Bloodseeker is coming. He's got the first. He's looking for it. Runs into the Enigma though. Steals the bounty. It seems. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a good 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 little pickup. Wait, did he? He got 120 gold. I think he just sold something. Meantime, up at the bottom, and by up I mean really down. Okay, wait. I don't even want to know. Is this what happened, really? So there's the Necro, he, he activates a Shadow Amulet, just hides in the trees. Then the Crystal Maiden comes in, half an hour later. They don't have any detection, and she just drops an ultimate and he dies. Doesn't even do anything, doesn't decide to walk. You know what, I can respect that. Like, this is him saying, we'll, we'll let fate decide. <laughs> He's just saying, we'll let fate decide. If fate wants me to die to this Crystal Maiden ultimate, then so be it. But maybe none of those will hit me. And I'll survive. And then I'm gonna be fine. It's not like you'll still know that I'm there because I have my Heartstopper aura going on. No, 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 no. I'm just gonna be alright. <laughs> that guy is so next level. It's actually just unbelievable. Tay. Now she uh, has her refraction max out finally. Taking quite a bit of damage here. It's gonna end up being dead. Invisibility. Oh, but Bristleback, he has learned how to deal with this. He has learned. They figured it out. Not only do they have a blood secret, but they also they also have oh a little bit late on that one. But they also have the the experience from the bottom lane with the Necrophos, you know. No, no, no. We know how to deal with invisibility now. We have become wiser. No blade. Hasn't decided to skill anything yet. Why would you not max out death pulls? This is like your strongest ability. <laughs> okay, this is just giving me a headache now. But like, Necrophos is amazing and I love him. Right? Please max out death pulls and the W. The E is just not good. Right? It's just not that strong. Slug, kind of dying here. He's got a pounce. Shrine isn't ready. I don't know why he activated that. That was a bad idea. Oh, the black hole! Um, he's still alright. Gets a little bit of damage in. Now getting murdered by the Necrophos. I mean, he does have 30 additional attack speed. Still not skilling anything here. Just keeping the skill points. I don't, I don't know, I don't know why, why, why he still has that, but, but sure. Slark is back, looking to fight some more. He's gonna die. Invoker dropping low as well. Enigma coming in now. Still doesn't have a stun, of course. I mean, why would you need that, right? Like that's completely unnecessary. And Enigma is gonna die. Rip. Bloodseeker just running around like crazy. I mean, he can. Right, like he's fast, he does damage. It's Bloodseeker out there. What was that? You don't know there's a tower there, right? Like, like well, what the fuck, man? There's a TA. She's running in. She's ready to fight. She wants the. No, no, never mind. Oh, fuck. No, no. <laughs> you can totally see the thought process there, where it's just like, oh, don't worry, I'm TA. I can't kill this. Oh, God. Oh, God. In this. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. They have a tower. <laughs> Necro activates his invisibility again. Another ultimate. Oh, it instantly gets cancelled. I like that the raid went for it, though. That's beautiful. Necro, he's healing. He's got his death pulse going on. Now at level 10, still keeping skill points for really no reason. He's not skilling stat because he can't do that anymore, right? Like, he's just not using his skill points. Is he dead? I uh, know. We've got the Monkey King going for it. Can he do it? He just, he's ruptured. He's just gonna keep running though. Goes down finally. Enigma trying to maybe secure that kill. It's not gonna be enough. Bloodseeker healed up. The Winter of Iron dropping an ultimate even. And so the Enigma is gonna take a lot of damage from the Slark now. Enigma still on the retreat. Bloodseeker is now coming in. He wants this one. He gets it. Meatball flying TA invisible. Well, 
<laughs> Again, we have got, we have become trained in the art of dealing with static invisibility. So he has 1,700 gold, almost 1,800 gold saved up. I wonder what his next item is. But like, what's the next step in this plan? This is really what I, what I am interested in. So we're just going to finish up the Shadow Blade then. But the Shadow Blade doesn't do it like the, the whole strategy as well as the, the regular, like the, the Shadow Amulet. Right, Shadow Amulet allows you to be invisible permanently. Is he just gonna die? He's actually just dead. Did that just happen? Like, what, what is going on here? Oh man, that was great though. I like that he just died like that. It's beautiful. <laughs> Alright, Slark going in. Doesn't care about Rapture or why would he need to? And he's dead. These guys are just diving in one by one for really no reason at all. Templar Assassin goes invisible. I think she's just dead. Guys! What, what are you doing? Please? Oh, the Monkey King stun. He finally has his tree dance as well. Yeah, so the Dire side, they're just running into the Radiant right now. Right, one by one, and they're gonna, they're just all getting picked off like that, and I mean, that's gonna happen. Right, like, that is the la logical consequence to you running in like that. Necroforce, oh, the meatball, yeah, he's dead. No, ooh, Enigma, but there's nobody here, there's no follow-up, there's nothing. Sorry, man, you don't have anything. Slark now coming in, dealing a little bit of damage. I mean, he may actually be able to secure this. Yeah, he gets one. No, actually, two, gets a double kill. Bloodseeker is still here, runs into the TA. You have them- Oh my god! She gets the kill- Are you fucking kidding me? Look at this! This is upsetting. Alright, so there's the Bloodseeker with no HP. <laughs> Instead of running away, he just decides to go back in. TA now runs in, no refraction active, nothing. Hits him twice, doesn't keep her thing active. Bloodseeker on the retreat and then just, just dies. I mean, it's just getting... I mean, come on. Come on. <laughs> please. Please. Use your abilities. There's actually something that I find um, interesting. Something I've noticed, too. Lower level skill players, they don't use their spells. Isn't that weird? Oh, come on, man. You move back. You keep the creeps in line. You farm much quicker like that. You have an amazing farming tool on the E, and she's not using it at all. Sunstrike? Oh my god, she's almost dead. Nope, that's not gonna do it. Oh, the Shadow Blade! Can the Maiden hunt her down? She wants it! She's looking for it! She's looking for it! Oh, there she is! No. Not gonna be able to do it. That's disappointing. There's a Stark, though. Maybe him? Okay. Q comes out, instantly purchases all of her stuff. Crystal main ultimate, not enough. Didn't get lucky enough. There was definitely a chance of her winning that fight, but it's just that. Right, the crystal main ultimate is still random. It's still just a chance. Oh well. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video so far, right, like 23 minutes into it, uh, we're like not even halfway done. Like, we got quite a while of this shit to go, right? So you better buckle up. But uh, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a rating. We'll definitely appreciate that. I really need it, actually. Right? I don't know. It's kind of important. So, uh. Anyway, meatball coming up. Oh, wow. He actually gets a kill right there. Look at that. Walker is so difficult to play. Even 1k MMR players can do it. Man. Right? Like that's that's like that's always the thing, right? Like everybody's always but Bahomi and Mocha is so hard to play. Yeah, he's so hard to play. He is so hard to play that even players with literally less than 500 MMR can do it. That's how hard to play he is. <laughs> All right, Towers is kind of kind of pushing things here. Still no, uh, still no higher level of Malefisto. You really need to max that out, man. This is a very powerful ability, right? And and it just it does so much. It does so much. Like think about this differently. 
Right, like currently you think of it as like, oh, it's only 30 damage and 0 0.25 second stuns. Does that really matter? Or think about it as, what if it is a 3 second stun with 270 damage attached to it? Would you skill that? Because I would. Oh, hell yeah, I would. Necro ultimate kind of doesn't really do much. He goes invisible, though. Slark now jumping in. He's looking for the Monkey King ultimate. It does a little bit, and then everybody just kind of leaves because he really doesn't do a lot of damage. He almost dies just to the Winter Wyvern. <laughs> Splinter Blast doing too much damage here. Bristleback picking up uh, the Blade Mail. Vanguard, the usual stuff. Bloodseeker going for the Saint Shin. Yasha, an item I'm still not a big fan of. I still hate that thing. It's terrible. Mocha going for the Aghanims. Right, we've got the Shadow Blade on the Crystal Mane already. Winter Wyvern. Four stuff. Becca, Arcane Boots, that, that's some good stuff actually, those are reasonable items, very much so. Necroforce just getting Shadow Blade into, I don't know, Aghanims? Stark of course working on his Shadow Blade, we have the TA working on the Desolator, Enigma, Blink Dagger, BKB. Item wise it's pretty reasonable, this is something I've just, I don't know, like this is actually an exception in these shit cards that we had this Necroforce and his questionable item decisions, right? But funnily enough, item-wise, uh, a lot of players actually go for pretty reasonable stuff at all skill levels. Right? You wouldn't really expect it, but no. People actually just buy reasonable items most of the time. And I, I blame the guides for that. And, and I'm going to use the word blame because, god damn, it would be so much funnier if people didn't have access to guides. God, that would be so much funnier. I think what we need to do, we need to go into like a higher skill bracket, right? You need to go to like 2k, 2.5k, where players are like, I am the best player in the fucking world. I'm just held back by my teammates and look at my incredible item builds. And I think that might be even funnier. Right, but these players, they, they actually think they are good, but they're just terrible. And their item builds are terrible. Even though they think they found a secret recipe. Because in here... I feel like most players are kind of aware of the fact that they aren't very good. Right? Like, at 1k, everybody's like, yeah, no. No, I, I ended up down here because I'm kind of trash. <laughs> and so I'm just gonna stick to the guides because the guides, I don't know, they seem reasonable. Right? I don't know, probably not everybody, but I feel like there are a lot of players like that. And I think there's a lot more interesting stuff at maybe a little bit of a higher skill out. Necrophos. On the retreat, up he goes. Uh, we've got the meatball, the deafening blast, and that's actually just a dead necro. Yeah, Invoker getting the quick combo on that guy. Nothing too scary. He's working on his Aghanims as well. Uh, Monkey King now on the retreat out. He's going to be able to do so. There's not really much a uh, back can do. Oh, the black hole? Well, that's just a quick kill, right? Now, I'm not sure why the Monkey King ultimate, but in the end, they get the kill anyway. So the black hole comes out, actually getting uh, two kills right there. It's pretty valuable. It's pretty valuable. As per always, you know, I'm always pointing out the same things in these shit casts, but that's the... Like, it's just a matter of, well, the same things are always happening, right? It's always the same problems you see in these games. People aren't utilizing resources, right? Their creeps right here are not being farmed right there, right there, right? Like, all of these camps, they're just not being taken. There's a bounty rune even laying around. Like, this bounty rune, if it's not picked up before the 26 minute mark, then it's just going to be wasted money. Right? It's just money that disappears. Like, you see the bounty rune up here? And now it's replaced by a new bounty rune. Right? Which just means that this 100 gold bounty rune, just that 100 gold that you could potentially have had just disappeared. When every time you don't clear out a spawn of creeps, and then they or should respawn, but they don't because there's already a camp in there. It's money wasted. It's all the money wasted. If you look at the last hits here, nobody got any fucking last hits, right? 62, uh, 62 last hits, 63, 64 on the Bristleback here. He's the highest in the game, apart from Enigma. But Enigma, again, I don't really count him because he was jungling from the very beginning. So his, his score is going to be inflated. Net worth is terrible as well. Because nobody's taking any of these creeps. 
right? At this skill level, you can absolutely dominate and destroy a game simply by having uh, more money. That's all you need. You just get bigger than them by farming better, by farming faster. That's all you have to do. Desolating already on the TA. I don't know what she's doing here. Is she hiding? Where's she hiding from? Alright, she's just gonna retreat away. Monkey King. He's not here. Puts down the, the boundless strike. Just does a little bit of something. The TA Desolator. Of course, the lets her deal a lot of damage, but they don't really have any catch. Now, right now is where both teams are kind of noodling, although it seems like the Radiant side is starting to, to want to push. Alright, they are setting up for it. Oh, TA caught. Yeah, she's just burst down, right? Do they have detection? Oh, they do. Fancy. <laughs> well, down she goes. Isn't that nice? Isn't that awesome what detection does for you? Right? It's 180 gold and it's two kills. You're buying kills. You think about it that way, all of a sudden you're a lot more inclined to actually invest into it. Oh, the black hole and he's dead. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, man. All right. But no. Enigma comes in. He blinks into the meatball and oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That is very unfortunate. In the meantime, the Slark is tearing apart the Monkey King. Necrophos coming in. He does a little bit of right click damage. And, and then he's forced to retreat out because he's got nothing. He's got nothing. Monkey King now looking to fight, but he's just going to get blasted by the Bloodseeker. And GG already, man. You don't do that. You don't call an early GG. Come on. Be ready to fight. Monkey King Ultimate coming out. Fighting it out with the Bristleback. His passive is active and, 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 he, and he, then he dies. Slow goes down as well. Necrophos. Maybe he's going to turn it up now. Maybe this is, this is where the strategy comes online. Drops an ultimate. Gets the kill. That's actually pretty big. That means a lot of healing for the Necrophos. Maybe even looking for a little bit more. The TA does quite a bit of damage here. Necro coming in. Oh my god. Is he going to do it? He gets another one. He could totally have gotten all three of those kills. I'm very disappointed he didn't, like, just get a rampage right there. That man could... No, don't click on the creep! <laughs> no, that man could totally have gotten all three of those. That is... Very disappointing. Yeah, you gotta grow some balls. I mean, I understand that you like your invisibility, which means that probably you don't have any. But uh, that's why you need to grow them. You know? You need to grow them. You need to make them beautiful. Because right now, it's just... Uh, it's got 3,000 gold. I wonder what he's saving up for. It could be Dagon. Like, I don't know. He can't afford Aghanims if he wants that. Seems to be Aghanims. Yeah, it's Aghanims. Activating the shrine. You're Necrophos. You have infinite healing. <laughs> also, why are you not skilling your shit? He's not getting his talents. He's not getting his, his ghost shroud. Why are you not skilling stuff? This is... Oh, man. This guy is like... I'm on a game full of people like him. Where do I get a game like that? Where do I get a game like that? I legit want to watch the worst game of thought I've played ever. This is what I want to make my life go. Right, I want to watch the f worst game of Dota that has ever been played. And I think we all want to watch it together. No? Are you guys up for that? Because I'm up for that, hell yeah. So it's amazing. Crystal Main now picking up a Blink Dagger here. We've got a Walker Akinums. Yeah, just the usual Octarine core on the Bristle Bag. That's a little bit interesting. TA or the run. Couldn't quite make it to the shrine. I think we're gonna see another push soon. Necro, he's invisible. Oh, he's doing massive damage with that hardstop aura. 
<laughs> Come on, man. What are you doing? All right, the push through the mid here. Bundle strike coming out. Bloodseeker activates his field. Connects with the Necro. Tia is still dead. And the Bristleback is diving deep right now. Look at that guy. He just wants to go in the meantime. <laughs> well, another nice black hole. It's just there's nobody there to experience it. Nobody can really help out. So that's kind of unfortunate. That seems to be the theme of this game, right? Like, all of these black holes, but there's actually just nobody there. But that's something you gotta do as, as Enigma, right? Like, this is something I see done wrong quite a bit, actually. You know, Enigmas are like, hey, I can get a five-man black hole right now. I'm going to take it. But the thing is, isn't it better to just get a two-man black hole and your team is actually there than to get a five-man black hole and nobody's there and you can't actually get any kills? I think it is. Monkey King, can he do it? Nah. Sunstrike coming out. It's gonna deal some damage, but the Necrofoss is still invisible. TA trying to fight it out. She goes invisible too. Dust it up immediately. Wrong button used first though. He activates the smoke. Wait, did he? Some cooldown, so I imagine he actually didn't. And down she goes. Invoker gets the barracks. And uh, looking pretty good for the Radiant here. Definitely looking pretty nice. I mean, they're ahead by a lot. Right? Not only that, they're actually pushing, which is impressive. They're actually getting barracks, going for the shrine even. Well, not entirely, but a little bit. Just a little bit. We have Slark sneaking around. All right, Necro goes invisible. Dust it up immediately. Slark going in on the Winter Ivan as well. He's going to start dealing a little bit of damage. The Necroforce ultimate finishes him off. Bloodseeker trying to fight it out. It's not going to be enough. Necroforce currently healing up too much for the Invoker to get through. And Invoker will also get caught out. That's three heroes down for the Radiant. And now the Dire may be able to make that comeback happen. We even got the Bristleback coming in as well. Trading hits with the Monkey King. Monkey King just trying to stay alive. Not going to happen though, the Crystal Main finishes him off. TA now looking for a little bit more here. You know, she got bloodthirsty after those first three. Crystal Main is here, she doesn't have the mana for her ultimate though. Bristleback goes down, Crystal Main goes down as well. They trade the TA for it, but it's almost certainly worth it for the die. Slark now finishing up his Skull Basher. So he'll be... He'll be able to actually deal some damage. By the way, that Necro is killing me. Yeah, that Necro is beautiful, man. This Necro is the most beautiful fucking snowflake. Like, God, I love this guy. I want to be him. Why can't I just be this Necro Force? That's really one of like the most up upsetting things in my life right now, that I am not this Necro Force. Wouldn't that be beautiful? <laughs> Push one if you want to be that Necro Force. <laughs> All right, two hundred, uh, a low twenty, three hundred health. God, speaking is out. Three hundred health over the forty second respawn time. I think you almost always want to go with the respawn time there. I'll be honest with you. All right, forty second respawn time is really strong. Oh well. Do we have any other interesting talents? Slark, not really. I find it a bit odd that he's going for the strength over the agility, but it's not really too crazy, right? It's actually reasonable. 15 strength is 300 health, you know, that can definitely come in handy. Monkey King uh, picking up the Basher, as you would expect. We've got TA working on a Daedalus, just picking up the recipe. Crystal Main Ultimate comes out, she just immediately gets beaten up by the Monkey King, though. And the killer goes to the Necro. Sun strike, yeah, that's not gonna do much. And turns out that having, having your uh, tree jump, what is it called, tree dance, as a monkey king is pretty important and very valuable. Who would have funk? Would have expected that? Oh, is he gonna be able to kill her? Wow, 
that actually killed her. That's crazy. Yeah, that's actually just insane. All right, Winter Mama doing some damage. You've got the black hole. This time, there's actually a team around. BKB gonna protect him. Enigma uses the Malefice. Invoker now taking a lot of damage. Jump by the Slark. Slark is gonna eat him up. And down goes the Invoker. You know, this is also some nice casting practice. I really wanna get into casting. Like, that's something I really, really badly want. I just don't know how to do it. Alright. Maybe it's just not meant to be. But I wish it was. <laughs> oh well. Got the Necrophos now picking up uh, something else. What? So he's all in on the invisibility aura damage build, I guess. Going for the Radiance. Man, this guy's build is amazing. This is next level shit right here. Absolutely. Monkey King going down. Yeah, just a rupture finishing that. Uh, it's uh, pretty much what you would expect. Pretty much exactly what you would expect, honestly. Slark is also farming down here. He's now uh, almost got his Abyssal Blade. So Abyssal Blade is a really powerful item on the hero. Like, every time I get an Abyssal Blade on Slark, I just feel strong. And I just feel like, yeah, we're getting there now. Right, like that is the item where you really can start taking over the game. I imagine the same thing is true here. Just lets him go nutty on people. Main taking a lot of damage. Look at how much damage she is taking by just being near that necro. Man, that is amazing. <laughs> that is so good. I love that guy. Yeah, she's just still roaming around. Crystal main agonims. Okay, that's good. But yeah, again, we have reached the noodling stage. The noodles, where the noodle is just noodle. Uh, how about we speed this up a bit? Yeah, we just have it play at 1.5, so we don't have to spend forever. Waiting for something to happen. Until we see a fight is brewing. And then we go back to regular speed. I think that sounds good. Yeah. Let me know what you think. Right? Let me know if you if you think I should speed it up at these points. Because I, it's probably best. It's probably for the best. Alright. But I think we may have a fight. Oh. There's certainly a chance for something happening. I've got a rupture coming out on the Necro. He's gonna be alright though. Bloodseeker also picking up a BKB this now. Winter Bible in the meantime split pushing the top. Picking up a radi- uh, not a radi- so Vladimir's in his backpack. So. <laughs> Something I find interesting. Also, uh, interesting thought actually. Like, it, it would make sense for Auras to like, Aura from the backpack, no? Like, imagine you could actually just put a Vladimir's in your backpack and it just applied Vladimir's Aura. You wouldn't get any of the stats because you're not actually equipping the thing right but the aura should still be there in theory right but you know balance wise of course that's pretty much nonsense we've got the emp coming out oh enigma getting another black hole he's just dying just kind of the problem yep down he goes <laughs> necrophos trying to fight he's gonna be picked off though two heroes down for i uh for both sides Imoka gonna be the next in line slark manages to kill him really quick and uh, after all of that radiant actually yet again loses more than the dire although admittedly the radiant was missing two of the heroes and this is just kind of the problem i feel uh you gotta go as a team you gotta go as a team dude i'm built for it i don't know what you're built for but whatever it is it is amazing and i love you but I'm not sure what it is that you're built for. Because <laughs> this build isn't built for anything. <laughs> Alright. Well, uh, back to farming, right? Back to farming. 
But yeah, wouldn't it be interesting if you could have auras in your backpack? Let's say you put in a soul cross in your backpack. You don't actually get the soul cross benefits. You just get the aura, right? Everybody gets the aura. <laughs> the only item that would, of course, be good with is the Vladimir's. But it does kind of make sense, no? Is that just me? Chris is back also working on a hard now. So, he's gonna be quite tanky. He should get some armor. Like, armor is actually... Really the thing he's lacking. It's not so much... Not so much HP. He's got plenty of HP. Alright, he needs some more armor. Because right now he's just dying to the TA. You know, to the physical damage. That's really what's catching him. He takes a lot of physical damage. And then... Uh, Necro, Necro drops... An ultimate. And... Uh, yeah. I'm not saying how this bad... That well, is going to be a perfectly fine, strong item. I'm just saying that I, I would like to see um, some armor. Alright, Monkey King ultimate coming out here. Chris Main uses her ultimate as well. Instantly bashed out of it, though. And yeah, that's the that's the problem, right? Like, that Monkey King ultimate simply stuns everything inside of it. Somehow, the Chris Main wins that fight, though. <laughs> we have a buyback from the Necrophos. He's looking to come back in and fight a little bit more. Monkey King taking a lot of damage. Down he goes. Enigma casts a black hole. Yet again, no real backup. Necroforce casting an ultimate on the turn back of a bristleback. Won't be able to secure anything with it. Now the Slark is trying to fight here. He should actually be able to do so. I mean, I don't know what the Radiant is doing. These guys are just going in to die. Yeah, I mean, you can't do that. Slark simply deals too much damage. I mean... At this point, he's powerful. And the entirety of the Radiant side died. Are you serious? Are these guys actually going to lose the game? I, you, you can't actually be serious right now. Man, that's, that's, that's a little bit dumb. That is a little bit dumb. Okay, then. Radiant. They're gonna start pushing down the mid here. So what can the Radiant do to win this game? Right? Um, first of all, this guy needs an Assault Kuras. Right? He just a Plague Man. He just needs armor. Right? This is the big mistake this Bristleback is making. He thinks his tankiness comes from having a lot of HP. The problem with that is that tankiness and HP, they are just, uh, like, you're missing half the puzzle. Right, you're missing armor, because armor is super, super, super important. Can I actually do this? Oh, the second meet- Wait, where is that one going? <laughs> Gets the kill anyway. You need armor, right? So please, for the love of God, get a plate mail. If you ever in this situation as a bristle bag, don't get a hard, get a plate mail. Build that into an assault cross, even the Shiva Scout would do it. Even a Lotus Orb, although I think a sword cross is really the best option. Right, Crystal Main, she kind of needs a Ghost Scepter, and I think Ghost Scepters in general would do quite a bit in this game, right? The uh, Winter Warren could definitely pick one up, even Invoker if he wants to. Bloodseeker, uh, yeah, he has his BKB, so, you know, Bloodseeker, of course, he now has 30% lifesteal and all of that. The problem I see with Bloodseeker, she's just not a good right clicker. It just loses every single right click fight ever. Um, what you can do at this point, I personally would just be going to Aghanims, so I think Aghanims would be good, but if he doesn't want to do that, I, I understand. <laughs> that was beautiful, man. That was beautiful. Monkey King Ultimate coming out. Nobody did to actually run into it, though. Oh, Neko! Wow, he gets the kill! Now, trying to fight it out of the main gets blown up. Main far too powerful for that. But yeah, that's... Wow, Necrophos actually gets a kill on the Bristleback. Now Monkey King is gonna go down as well. And it seems like the Radiant may be able to finally get that push going. Although without the Bristleback, that will of course be a lot more difficult, right? Bristleback is... It's the hero that allows him to just walk into the base. Like, he's tanky, he can be the frontliner, he's the guy that goes in first. And you need somebody to go in first. If you don't have anybody to go in first, then nobody's going in. But it seems they're just gonna do it all at once. Slaughter coming in now. 
He wants his the black hole! It, it doesn't hit the, the invoker who finally casts his spells. Tornado comes out, EMP also going to connect and down goes the Enigma, murdered by his own team. Winter Viber now on the retreat. Slark is looking for a little bit more. Pushed back by the Invoker. I don't think that's going to actually delay him that much. The Winter Viber actually doing a little bit more in that regard. The Ice Wall also TA murdered by the Invoker. Ice Wall burning through her refraction charges and then the Sun Strike on top of that. Picking off. That was actually really well done. Uh, I'll give credit where credit is due. That was a... That was a good little encounter right there. Invoker refusing to skill his talents for some reason. Definitely should. I mean, he's level 25. I don't know why he didn't. Why he's not skilling his talents, but okay. Uh, in the meantime, we've got the Slark kind of trying to fight. He goes invisible. Yeah, he's back in the fight. Of course, Slark right now is feeling powerful. As he should, he is powerful, right? By, by all means, he is powerful. Up he goes. Jump away, yup, and he's gonna be fine. Takes a little bit more damage, but the healing in the background is gonna keep him in good shape. The tower taking a bit of damage from these Forge Spirits. No alacrity though, so it's not gonna be too much. Got the, what is it called? Blood Rite coming on. I have Blood Ritual in my head. Close enough, right? No, but the Blood Rite coming out. Just being a little bit annoying, and finally the Tower of Fools. Necrophos is now here, and they obviously know, right? Radiance doesn't appear out of nowhere. And he's looking to fight. Drops an ultimate on the Bloodseeker. Not gonna be enough to kill, not quite at least. Now he's starting to put out a bit more damage, casting his Q. BKB used by the Bloodseeker a little late, but in the end he's gonna end up being fine, it seems. Slark now coming in from the background. Takes down the Bloodseeker, looking for more. Seems the Winter Warren is gonna be next. Tornado flies, actually connecting on the Necrophos here. Is Necro dead? No, Necrophos is going to be alright. Crystal Maiden won't be though. She burns down to the Necrophos and... Uh, so in the end, yet again, a number one fight for the Radiant. Uh, not the Radiant, for the Dyer, sorry. Right, but the Dyer is really starting to make uh, <laughs> quite the comeback here. Howard is now ready on the bristleback. So, um, look, Howard, another Howard. It's not gonna give him that much HP. Like you would think that's a crazy. Oh my god, the double meatball, rip monkey king. <laughs> wow, it's crazy. EMP comes out. Invoker doesn't quite connect with anything now. Slark. Takes the Sun Strike? No, wow, that was close though. We're gonna try to chase down the Slark. They get a little bit of damage in on him already. I mean, he's taking quite a few hits. Invoker now gonna be jumped by the Enigma here. The Black Hole keeps him in place and uh, Slark is back. He wants to fight some more. Ready to go? Winter Wyvern or Invoker? He doesn't know, he doesn't know. Oh no, he misses! <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> you can't miss that! You can't miss that, alright. He finally connects his jump. He's now looking for a bit more Bristleback. Oh wow! Destroys the Necrophos with the Blade Mail. Woka's caught, but he just goes invisible and it's gonna end up being fine. Meatball comes out. We also got the, the Rupture on the Slark now. No invisibility used, he's just trying to fight it. Of course, he has his ultimate, but doesn't use it. Just goes down. TA now looking to fight. She gets one kill at least. I mean, she does deal massive damage just because she is TA, and TA deals a lot of damage. Meantime, up at the top, we got some creeps pushing down the lane. Nothing too big, though. Necrophos actually buying back to deal with it, but probably not. Not really that uh, important. Also, there's nothing less relevant than kill stealing. Right? This is funny to me. Like, he felt the need to con uh, like to correct his B, but not his this. So the this is intentional. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Alright. But, uh, anyway. 
uh, where was I going with this? Right, uh, I was talking about heart. So let's actually do some math, right? So let's say Bristleback has 4,000 HP just for the sake of it. Every point of armor gives you... Um, and let's just make these numbers a little easier, right? Just to make it... Just to smooth it out a little bit. This isn't entirely accurate, of course, but mostly. Um, heart, let's say he has 4,000 HP right now. Right, heart gives him a number 1,000. If he be able to get a plate man, every point of armor is 6% effective HP, right? Physical HP, I guess. Physical Effective physical HP. Um, so that's 10 points of armor. So every point is 6%. 6% of 4,000 is 240, right? You have got, if you, 6% in general, 6 or six or six percent of uh, one hundred is six. Six percent of uh, one thousand is sixty, and six percent of four thousand is two hundred and forty. Makes sense. So you have two hundred and forty per point of armor. Um, if he buys a plate mail, that effectively means he gains two thousand four hundred effective HP, and that is for a one thousand four hundred gold item. A hard, which is a five thousand five hundred gold item will give him 1,000 HP. Now, of course, that isn't entirely accurate. It's actually a, a little bit more than that because he already has some armor, right? But in the grand scheme of things, the points to stance. Just having more armor is more effective. Not only that, but uh, you know, Soul Cross helps with pushing, helps his team, helps him deal damage, right? Lots of, lots of benefits from having that Soul Cross. But all right. Meantime, we've got a fight in the background here. Slark coming in, looking for something, but uh, he's just going to be forced to retreat now. He does have a Scarly now, picking up the Abyssal Blade, of course, we saw earlier. Had a pretty big impact. So seeing another big item, yeah, it's going to change things. All right, main, taking a lot of damage. So Slark, though, seems he's actually just going to die. The Black Hole! Oh, God. Hits free. Again, no real follow-up though, but it did save the slot. Cast the second black hole. Winter Wyvern is going to go down. The black, uh, the BKB now coming out from the Enigma. Crystal Main cast her ultimate, dealing quite a bit of damage to the TA. Or oh my god! The TA just goes down. Enigma trying to fight it out with the Invoker. Who finally picked up his talents. Emergency Dust just kind of hoping that maybe that's going to scare them away. Bristleback. He's ready to push. I mean, he does have a decent amount of damage. Just having a lot of stats certainly helps. I mean, his ultimate is also very powerful. Slark coming in, takes down the Invoker. Now fighting it out with the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker, of course, doesn't stand a chance. Bloodseeker is not very powerful in terms of right-clicking, as I've already mentioned before. And down he goes. Now looking for some more. He's got 28 Essence Shift stacks. So at this stage, it's going to be incredibly hard for anybody to actually challenge the Slark. Seems they won't really need to. Crystal Maiden picking up the Heart of Tarask. <laughs> That's an interesting one. She wants to be tanky as well. She definitely wants to be tanky as well. And Moka is on a refresh already. That's uh, not necessarily the greatest option, I think. But sure, it's not terrible either. Like, it does fine. If you really want to do fancy Invoker stuff. Yeah, this guy is just going for a second hard, which again, I find terrible. Armor. Armor, armor, armor. Alright, like that is so valuable. Got Monkey King going for the big basher. I don't actually like the Abyssal Blade too much on Monkey King. I like Small Basher a lot. I think Small Basher is incredible. Um, but I don't think Abyssal Blade is necessary by any means. I mean, uh, Abyssal Blade... <sighs> You already have the bashing effect, right? That's really what matters. What I like to see on Monkey King is actually invisibility. Uh, Desolator is very powerful. Right? But invisibility I love because you can go in, you cast your ultimate, right? And you just go invisible within the ultimate. And uh, people just freak the fuck out. Or you can use it to cast. Like, you, you go invisible, you get yourself in a good spot, cast your ultimate, and then go from there. Blink Dagger is also very powerful for the same reason. Bling Dagger is an item I like to see a lot on that hero. Slark, uh, picking up a Reaver. I mean, it could be a hard, that could be Life Steal. 
I think at this point it matters too much. I would like to see a little bit more damage on the guy, right? I think Orchid would be quite fantastic. You go for the Bloodthorn, um, very powerful item on a Slark, but it doesn't really matter. He's quite a bit ahead at this stage, and he's also the strongest late game carry in the game, right? So not only is he ahead, but this is really, really where he shines. Does connect, but they still don't have vision on him. Puts a TP into his inventory. Now looking to just escape. Uh, he's undecided. Okay. Well, I guess he doesn't want to want to TP out just yet. Just gonna use his invisibility to sneak out. This is so funny, man. Like, all of these Eidolons. Level 25 Enigma. <laughs> Plus 8 Demonic Conversion Eidolons. Right? So... Um... Yeah. He spawns 11 Eidolons. <laughs> Look at that shit. That is amazing. Crystal Maiden Ultimate comes out. She just feeds all of them to everybody. Enigma casts his ultimate. Misses completely. We now got the freezing field doing a ton of damage from the main, freezing everybody in place as well. Meatballs flying, Monkey King is gonna be roasted up. Sunstrike taking him down. Slark sitting in the middle. He's uh, looking to fight. I mean, he just used his ultimate, but he's gonna be dusted up. He has invisibility, but it won't be enough to save him. Black Hole is ready again. Misses the two heroes that really can't kill him. And um, so he just goes down. Radiant, now maybe looking to actually finish this game. I mean, another Tornado, EMP, the Ice Wall as well, and TA is basically dead. Sunstrike is going to be enough to secure that one. She does get a kill, though. So at the very least, that. Another buyback from the Necrophos. This guy is very buyback happy. <laughs> but he's also the only one that actually has any. And that's pretty big. He activates his invisibility. Maybe looking to fight a little bit. Picking up an Aether Lens, so more cast range on the Aether Scythe, I guess. I'm not re Aether Scythe? Reaper Scythe. Them dire buildings are tough as nails for now. Okay, push through the mid. Evoker is just working on the barracks here. Oh, no, barracks, towers. Have the exact opposite. Sorry. Bloodseek is working on the barracks, though. <laughs> Got the Radiance clearing out those little things really quick. Top Barracks is gonna go down though. If they actually go for it. Yeah, there we go. Top Barracks falls. Ranged one as well. Bottom, there's a huge creeper if they... That uh, definitely, definitely needs dealing with. But the Dire side, they're too keen on fighting. So they just kind of ignore protecting. Melee Barracks goes down. Oh no, Range Barracks goes down. Melee Barracks as well. That's Mega Creeps. Tornado flies. EMP. Gonna come out as well. Doesn't really connect with much though. Meatball Deafening Blast. That was a big Meatball. Gets two kills. Slark now starts working on the Mocha Sunstrike. Coming out as well. Invisibility? Nope. Bashed up. Didn't get a chance to go invisible right there. But the Winter Vibrant is here. Kills the Monkey King. That's pretty good. Buybacks from the Radiant. They just want to finish the game right now. Bloodseekers here. Gets the Rupture on Enigma. Enigma does have Black Hole, but... Doesn't really have much he can do with it. And down he goes. Slark is now trying to fight, but at this point, I don't even think a Slark can do it. Maybe he gets dusted up, though. No Rupture ready. Rupture would be pretty big here. The Sans comes out. That's nice, too. Getting a Slark Sans stop is important. He's stacking up so much Essence Shift. Activates his ultimate, finally. Tornado comes out, but it seems they're gonna be able to kill him. Slark dies. Buyback from him, but his base is in shambles, and I think that's gonna be it. The Radiant ends up taking it after about an hour of noodling. <laughs> Alright. The early game yet again. 
mostly the important part. Maybe next time I'll do a more one-sided game. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I tried my best. I'm still feeling a little bit ill. I hope you didn't notice too much, but I'm sure you did. Um, yeah, but I tried my best. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.